In a lot of cases, when a client reaches out for a branding project, they also require a simple landing page that will explain the brand and help them drive traffic to the product. I know that a large part of you watching my channel are design enthusiasts, and coding might not be a cup of tea. So the idea of delivering on a website could be intimidating. It was for me at least for a long time, especially because there's a lot of headache and friction in designing the UI and then explaining it to a developer to get it built and published. Redmag, which is today's sponsor and also the tool that I'll be using to design and publish the landing page, solves this problem really well. It's a web-based design tool and unlike site builders, Redmag offers complete freedom. Instead of building blocks, you get a clean canvas to pour all your creativity onto. It has the best library of fonts and you can create amazing animations without writing a single line of code. Before we get started with the tutorial, let's grab a cup of coffee and take down some notes on what exactly we'll be designing today. Okay, so there are a couple of things to keep in mind while designing a landing page. The main purpose of a landing page is to convert a visitor into a customer. So you need to have a strong call to action, highlight the benefits of a product, provide social proof like reviews and testimonials to build trust and also mention ways they can reach out to you. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'll be taking a brand that I previously designed and building the landing page on that. So without any further ado, let's head over to readybank.com. So after you log in, you'll be able to create a new project by clicking on the plus icon on the top left. The first thing you wanna do is to go into the project settings and then turn on scalable layout. This will scale the layout to fit your screen. Then adjust the height using this anchor. Next, click on the widget panel and change the background of the page. You can also access the widget panel by pressing O on your keyboard. The widget panel is sort of like the layers panel in Photoshop. You can easily find all the shortcuts by hovering over any icon. Next, I'm gonna add some text by clicking on the plus icon and selecting text. You can change its font and style from the typography menu on the right. Redmag has a library of 3000 plus free fonts, so it's great for typography lovers. To access these fonts, click on the library button down here, select the font you like and add it to the font selector. After that, I'm gonna pin this to the center of my page using the position tool. Now page one is ready. Next, I'm gonna come back to my page menu and duplicate this two times to make page two and three and change the background and text as well. And now it's time to link all these three pages. First, create a new shape by clicking on add widget and selecting shape and then resize it to a rectangular bar. This will act as a floating menu. Next, pin this to the top and check on these two options down here. This will enable the bar to be on all pages and above all pages. Now add three more texts corresponding to the pages. To link these, select the text, go to the edit menu on the right and select the link option. In here, just type in the page number and press enter. This will link your first text to the first page. Do the same for the next two. Now I have renamed these from page one, two and three to home, about and contact. You can change it to whatever suits your website. Now you don't want this to look like a blue underlined link, so let's edit the default style for it. Select any one of the text and go back to the link option and you'll find an option for default link style. Click on the three dots and then click edit. It's divided into three sections, link, hover and current. Link is the default style, hover is for obviously when you hover your mouse over it and current is for when it's active, that is after you click the link. Initially I wanted to remain peach, on hover I wanted to have an underline and once it's clicked, I wanted to change it to dark blue. Now let's test it all out. Everything looks to be working fine. As I scroll, the active state on the menu changes accordingly and if I click on it, it will take me to that page. Let's make it a bit more attractive by adding some product images of the brand. It's pretty easy to add photos to your layout. All you gotta do is go back to add widget and select the picture option. I'm going to resize it and pin it to the left and then just drag my image from my desktop onto it. Redmag also has a huge library of unsplashed stock images. They have over half a million of images to choose from. So you don't need to go searching for the perfect picture all over the web. You'll find an option to create a button in the widgets panel. And that's one way to do so. But we aren't going to be using that. 
I want to add some hover animations and for that I'm going to start by creating two rectangular shapes. I'll fill one with color and make the other one bordered. Then add a text on top and group the first two by selecting them both and clicking the group icon on the right. Then drag it on top of the second rectangle. Now we animate it. Select the group rectangle and click on the animate option. Select on hover, then choose move effect. Move it 5 pixels up and 5 pixels right. Then decrease the time to 0.2 seconds and make the acceleration ease both. And that's done. The animation is working smoothly. If you want a page to open on click, you can add a link to that too. Let's add some more text and two more buttons to the about page. Alright, before we move on, I just want to mention that ReadyMag is absolutely free. You can register without a credit card and publish one website at a time. If you want to publish more projects, set custom domains or set up an online shop, you can subscribe to one of the paid plans. And the first 50 customers get a 25% discount on the first purchase using the promo code SHANTANUKE. Now on the contact page, I want to add a feedback form and social media links. Just select form in the widgets panel and a new form will pop up. You can adjust the spacing and other parameters in the edit menu. You can also add more fields if you want by simply clicking on the plus icon in the fields option. On the left, I'm going to add a tweet widget from the widgets panel and some icons and contact details. If you have icons in SVG format, you can simply drag it from a desktop and resize it and place it beside the text. Lastly, I'll drag in the social media icons and add in a circular background behind it. To add links to your icons, select it and click on the link tool on the right and type in your URL. You'll get an option to have it open in a new tab so you can check that on if you want to. Alright, before we wrap it up and publish it, there's one small thing left to do. We need to make the layout responsive for mobile view. For that, click on the viewport icon on the bottom left corner and select the mobile view. Here you can readjust your elements to fit vertically. Some of the adjustments I made for my mobile view were pinning all the pictures to the top of the page and removing any hover animations. Once that's done, you can go ahead and publish it from the project menu. Now this is how the final website turned out. They have an examples page which can be a great source of inspiration for your website design. And if you want to watch more tutorials, you can head over to the YouTube channel. Don't forget to use the code SHANTANUKE to get your 20% discount. All relevant links will be in the description.